Okay. Now, I just got the recording in progress announcement. I guess it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It always says okay. that when I press that button. <laughs> okay. Looks like we were sparsely populated this evening. I'm curious. Uh, what happened? To, I didn't think there was a recording on YouTube for the March meeting, which I had missed. You're right about that. I forgot to record it. Oh, okay. There's Alan. Yeah, yeah. My my wife left me this week, so she called me while on vacation and reminded me that I had a meeting. <laughs> you know, it never start. It never sounds good when you start with my wife left me. Left this me, week. I know. That sounds <laughs> that, bad. At least once or twice oh, a year, goes yeah. down to the Lake of the Ozarks and the girls. Oh. They'll never let me go. You have to say, Alan. My wife, my wife left me at home. <laughs> yeah. Sounds better. Yeah, be a little more specific about that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't here crying. <laughs> well, I'm hoping we have some more people show up here tonight. Yeah. Yeah, this is a little sparse. Get my brothers. Oh. oh. Okay, let's see. Maybe we have to get more spouses to send out reminders, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I was outside working in the garden. It's a, such a beautiful day. Yeah. It was a good day. Honestly, God, I was worrying, of all things, the light windbreaker type jacket um, to the Red Cross, which is, you know, we're working roughly about five days a week, volunteer. And of all things, basically, I just simply just, you know, left it on the chair where I normally sit at work. And I basically went down over to Panera and I bought myself soup and salad for lunch. I mean, I, you know, came back, everything was, co was cool. Um, but I mean, honestly, God, I just simply didn't find I really didn't need the jacket. I just simply would have looked, waited a little bit and left it warm up a bit more. Yeah. Started off cool. Yeah. But it got up. Yeah. I think it was only 75, they said. Now tomorrow it's supposed to be warmer again. Yeah, and hot and good. humid and possible rain this the rest of the week. Yep. And you all talking about how nice it is. And as I said, I'm here sweating my butt off at the track. <laughs> Like, uh, no, please. You know what? I hate summer in St. Louis. Can you give me another month or two of pleasant weather yet? <laughs> it's always about two weeks. Yeah. Plus, tell you what, we need some rain fierce, I'll tell you. Oh, that that is true. You know, I have a sprinkler system, but we never turn it on until, you know, I've got it scheduled for the company to come out and flush the system. And we turn it on usually at the beginning of June because we never need it. And I'm going, man, we could use some water here. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling somebody about that. And they said, Well, everything's so green. How do you think we need rain? I said, Do you dig in the ground? You can't dig in the ground. It's like concrete, you know. I was working with my javelin throwers today, and they're throwing, and the javelin's just like hitting the ground and bouncing up in the yeah, air. Bouncing up. <laughs> I mean, with the points that would not go in the ground. It was uh -huh. so hard. Um, yeah, well, if it we don't get uh some you know if we don't get some uh rain soon it's not going to be looking real green in a while no once the hot weather starts it'll burn up like crazy yeah yep. i just came back from pennsylvania it was there for a week northwest pennsylvania and it was in the 30s and it was snow flurries and sleet and just damn cold and muddy and i was like is the rain ever going to stop? And I mean, <laughs> it was just everything. I, we thought we were going to turn into mushrooms. 
<laughs> we came back. Uh, when did we come back? Friday or Saturday? And uh, yeah, and, and of course, as soon as it, we could watch the temperature gauge in the car as we you know headed across Pennsylvania, Ohio, and then Indiana, et cetera, and it just kept going up and up. By the time we got to St. Louis, it was you know uh, in the sixties, and it's like. Shh. But I'll tell you, it was it was damn cold up there. Well, it's been a weird year. Yeah. Oh yeah. California has had so much water from the from the snow that they can't even plant some of their areas. Mm -hmm. Flooding. You know, so. the day that it was ninety three here over the weekend, that evening as it was raining, we got a little bit of a front come through. It was still like seventy eight here, and I'm looking in Chicago it was forty five at the same time. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah, it's been weird weather. Oh yeah. The uh they had had some storm up there in Pennsylvania. We saw lots of trees down. And uh these were big trees, not little ones. And uh we got the the one weird thing was uh things were just starting to green up up there and you could see where the deer we had a row of evergreens and you could see the deer had nibbled anything green from about four or five feet down and then anything above it was green but everything else below it all the green was gone because the deer ate it all yeah and there were deer uh in turkeys god there were some big turkeys and the turkey season started while we were up there and uh the turkeys disappeared for a while and then uh about three days later after the uh, after the season started they showed up again but in my mind, they looked a little more nervous than they were before. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, turkey season's in the fall, isn't it? I, I think you're right. Know. It is. is. Yes. Yeah. But there, they had their turkey season up there. That was theirs. And it started, uh, gosh, the Saturday before last. So interesting. Did anybody see? I, I, I got a note from Costco that uh, they were selling the studio uh, uh, I, uh, iMac or just Mac, I guess, uh, for I think they were going to knock like four hundred fifty dollars off of it. Um, it's just pretty, pretty sweet deal. But uh, I didn't see uh, I, I was over at Costco today uh, getting my the next COVID shot which is actually the same shot that we got last fall, but they're saying for us old people, we should get it again. Uh, but uh, I mean, that was a pretty significant uh, drop in price. Usually Apple, you know, they drop it, you know, $25 and they pat themselves on the back that, oh, look at the discount we gave them. <laughs> you sure this wasn't a discontinued one? <laughs> no, it's the studio. Wow. The studio one. Let me look it up. I did read somewhere that yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm they expect right a now. new Mac Studio coming out with the new updated chip, or which maybe is the yeah. M2. I don't know. They've got. I'm looking right now here, and it says they've got one for three thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Mac Studio Apple M1 Ultra chip, one terabyte. Yeah, and then there's the other one. There's another one. Ninety nine ninety nine. For a 512 gig storage. Right. Apple One M1 Max chip. Right. And that's uh that's and that's what I, what I need. Yeah, for Costco. Yeah. I mean, I you know, I really like uh you know, I, I like the uh the studio uh with more memory. That's what I do. I I don't I, I hate having to keep you know paying Apple for storage. You know, I can, uh, I mean, I, like, I back up this system here, and I have uh, hard drives, and uh, 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 I got those uh, uh, fireproof safes or whatever in the basement, so, uh, but, you know, it, it just seems like they really want everybody to put everything in their cloud, you know, so they can get some more money out of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to get started here. Um, let's see what we got. So we got John. He's there on the, he waved. 
Steve's here tonight. He's our different Steve, Steve Maynard. He's our yeah, first yeah. vice president. Uh, Glenn House is our second VP. Alan Thorpe is our treasurer. And I'm here. I'm the secretary and club finance person. Um, Apple Professionals meet the 31st of May. They're, they have a website. We have a link to our, on ours. Um, upcoming meetings. Next month in June is the WWDC announcements. A lot of new things is, are expected, including maybe Apple VR machines or whatever they're going to come out with. Who knows, but it'll be interesting. I think they've that meetings about... Years. I'm sorry, what? I said they've been expected for years. Those virtual yeah, but, reality things. Right, but the rumors I read recently seem pretty certain that that's what it, one of the things that's going to be announced. But anyway, we'll find out. July are custom watch faces along with other stuff that we haven't really discussed yet. Um, the membership rewards program is continuing. I've been writing your names down as you appear on the screen tonight. Um, that drawing will be held next month, June 14th, general meeting. And as long as you're a, a fully paid member by that meeting, the beginning of that meeting, um, you have a chance to win one of the hundred one of four $100 Apple gift cards. Um, let's see what else. Anybody have a new piece of, I know Steve, I think, has a new item that he purchased recently that he wanted to tell us about. If anybody else has a new piece of software or um, hardware after he's finished, we're well, glad to hear from you. So Steve, you ready to talk about that? Yeah. Hold on here. Let me share my screen and see if this actually. There, everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I had to replace the phone mount in my truck. Uh, it just cracked and wouldn't stay put. So I did some research and I found a good reviews of a product made by Van Mass. Uh, the phone mount comes with both a suction cup and a vent clamp. Clamp. I first tried the suction cup on the inside of my windshield. Uh, the suction cup is covered with a thin plastic film, which lets you attach uh, the phone mount to the glass temporarily if you want. Uh, if you remove the film, the cup has an adhesive on it. So make sure you're committed. I had to get out a putty knife to remove it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it, it holds really tight either way, whether you want with the film or without. Um, but I didn't like the way it obstructed my view uh, when it was on the windshield. Um, that's just my taste. I've seen other people using it just fine. Uh, you can also attach it to your dashboard but if you decide to use the adhesive, then you're pretty much committed. So let's take care of that. So next slide. I decided to use the vent clamp, and this is a snapshot of the inside of my truck. It attaches in a way I've not seen before, and this was the big drawing card for me. It's got a small hook that you can loop behind one of the louvers on your vent, and then it also has a set of grooves that fit over the louver. And then after you have it in place, you turn the nut to tighten it up snug. And it works the inset really. There? I'm sorry? Is that the inset picture there? Where, it's, where the phone is being held? Um... We're, not only... We're not seeing your inside of your truck. Really? Yeah, we're still seeing that first pic first picture. That's right. Well, why won't it go to the next slide? I don't know, man. <laughs> okay. No. Zoom. Nobody's truck is that neat. Yeah. <laughs> Your screen sharing is paused. Resume sharing. Stop sharing. Oh shoot. It's always something. Are you sharing a PDF or uh, what? I'm trying to share a photograph from what I am be, be what I'm thinking. 
Now, kitty cat, you can be good. Screen share. Okay, what does that look like? It's showing something about a hook, a groove, and a nut. That's it. That's the slide I want. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I was saying before, it, this is what got my attention with the product. The old uh, phone mount that I had, it would slip onto the louvers, and there was a little lever you pushed that would squeeze these two jaws together, but it did not hold tight. And mm. that was what finally failed on the old one. Yeah. This one, on the other hand, it has a little hook that slips behind the louver and a set of grooves that straddle the louver. And then you tighten that nut and it pulls it in snug. And that thing won't go anywhere. And there is a safety feature on the nut that I kept tightening and tightening. And finally, it just started to, to ratchet. Like, you can only yeah. tighten it so far before it quits tightening. So you're not going to break anything. That's good. That That's good. And let me see if I can change slides. Did it change? No. no. <laughs> Do them one at a time. What is going on here? By the way, I'm not laughing at you, Steve. I'm, I'm feeling your pain because it never fails that things don't work the way you want them to when you start presenting. <laughs> no feeling, man. Been, Been there many times. And let me try one more time. Share screen. There. How's that look? That looks good. Better. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like when it's mounted in place. You know, I was going to full screen, and I wonder if that's what threw off uh, Zoom. Okay. So, uh, from now on. So this is what it looks like when it's mounted on the vent. <coughs> in place, and it hardly wiggles at all, even when the truck is going over a rough road. I mean, it is there tight. Now, did I change slides? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I learned on this one. $25 <laughs> Amazon. And there's the link where you can buy it, or you can go to the uh, company's own website down there below. And that's it. Cool. Stop sharing. I've had several phone mounts, well, probably three or four over the year, and eventually every one of them fails. This is the best one so far. So if you like to use CarPlay, if you like to have your phone there to follow directions, use maps or whatever, I really recommend this one. Uh, it, it's solidly built, and uh, I think it'll last you a good long time, and it's an excellent design. So. There you go. Thanks, Steve. Anybody else have a, a new piece of either software or hardware that you want to share the group? No? OK. Anybody have a question for the group? Uh, yeah, I was just curious. Uh, who's doing the Facebook page for Gamog? All of the officers. All of the officers? Yeah. Does the, my understanding is that the page has to be linked to somebody's personal Facebook account. That would be mine. It's linked to yours? Yeah. I'm the one that uh, created it to begin with, but I uh, made all of the officers administrators. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why you're asking, Terry? Um, just, we don't really understand how Facebook operates. And um, what I'm trying to figure out, how can I have a Facebook page called Cloud Dancer? Um, I don't want to be known as uh, Tammy Coin on Facebook. I want to be a uh, Cloud Dancer. And whenever I, I want to, when I join groups and stuff, I want to join groups um as cloud dancer because that's my like my skydiving name <laughs> um you, you can go into settings and change the display name yeah it's uh, based on your settings on your profile 
Yeah, I'd, I'd have to refresh my memory to go back in. But so my I personal my own... page, I can have a uh, display name? Yeah. So whenever I post, even though uh, my account is Tammy Coin, whenever I post, my display name, Cloud Dancer, is used. Right. Maybe. So does she need to create a business page like you did for Gamug, or does she just need to use a display name? Uh, she doesn't need just, to just do her own says. It's your own personal account. Yeah, you shouldn't have to create a different account. My understanding is there's there something called a business page. Is that what Gamma get pay, uh, page is? Because it has multiple administrators assigned to it. Was the Gamma page created as a business page? No, no, we're just an organization that created his own Facebook page. Facebook has zillions of nonprofit groups that have their own Facebook. Oh, so you had just an option to create a nonprofit page? Yeah, it doesn't say nonprofit specifically. It's just organizations. Oh, okay. So you got a person comes in on their personal account and create an organization page. That's what was happened for Gamog. But you're suggesting in her case that she can uh, not even create an organization for Cloud Dancer, but she can use a display name is what you're saying? Right. That's right. Tammy, you would create your own personal Facebook account. And then if you wanted to join the Gamut page, you would ask to join. Now, you'd have to remind us that you are not Tammy, you are Cloud Dancer. Otherwise, <laughs> we get requests all the time from Timbuktu saying, we want to join your group. And I asked them some questions. It's very clear that all they want to do is advertise. So uh, uh, you might want, if if you get that far that you want to join the Gamut Facebook page, you might want to shoot us an email to remind us, hey, I'm Cloud Dancer, let me in. Yeah, um, I, I would I would do that. Okay. Can I ask, beside, besides the officers, are any of you going to that Facebook page? Uh, okay. No. Yeah, I. You know, here's the thing: if if people, it's really a great way to share information and stories and things like that. And if I knew people were going there to look at it, I I would probably be sharing you know, Apple related content every day almost. But no, nobody's going there to look at it. It it doesn't really seem too worth my time to be doing it. <clears throat> I don't want to use Facebook at all, but I'm getting peer pressure from others that I need to be on Facebook. And I, I just, uh, uh, I'm so offended by the idea that I have to give them my phone number. Um, and, and then I create this concept of Facebook jail. Uh, so if some AI doesn't like what I'm doing on Facebook, um, I know that some AI uh, uh, penalized a YouTuber who was uh, YouTubing about Pokemon Go. And, um, uh, the YouTuber uh, showed a uh, uh, a card of of a Pokemon like oh uh, that you can see my Pokemon there. Well, he, he showed the the, the Pokemon uh, uh, on YouTube, and some AI uh, it tripped some AI and it banned his account. I really uh, sucked. <laughs> Because sometimes um, artificial intelligence AI stands for um, automated idiots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good one. That's you know, all true. I can say is I've, I've been on there for years and never felt like I've had any kind of issue or known people that have. So, um, and, and, you know, honestly, I've never really felt that worried about it because, you know, as yeah, far uh, as it's like, hey, like, Lisa phone number or something it's out there so much i want to ask you about two things one is party called me today and um she, she actually the video now. who be that that was from tommy tommy what was that why was that coming through you're listed by the way twice on the screen <laughs> oh, uh, okay i'm gonna go move on i only seen once um, our next thing, or I guess our next thing should be the gaming apps. If anybody has 
we call them casual gaming apps because they're not talking about some really major thing, but the kind of things you like to use on your phone or your iPad that kind of keep you entertained for when there's not much else going on. So I know a couple of the officers have things, so they're going to talk about it. If any of the rest of you do, please feel free to join the conversation. So who would like to go first? You know, Steve uh, mentioned, Glenn mentioned. Glenn has I, a, I need a, like I hundreds need to of them. I with my, <laughs> my iPad and then I will, but <laughs> if you remember, I had to go and do this for two different things. Here's Glenn's iPad came up. Yeah, hold on. Am I, there you go. <laughs> now you get to see it from two different directions. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, but now I got to remember how to, how I did this before because. Um, you were just trying to share your screen, your pad. Yeah, but I don't. I, don't remember, I gotta remember how to do this because I'm not used to using this on an iPad. So um, let's see. Quick time. Quick time uh, player. Well, now if you remember last time, now it's okay. Wants to do the stupid screen broadcast thing. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Um I gotta figure out where to go here though. Let's see. You're still seeing that. Um, oh, there we go. Wait a minute. Sorry. Okay. For a heartbeat. There we go. All right. Can you guys all see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I I just kind of have found myself enjoying casual gaming. Um, as I was telling the officers, I've got a good friend of mine who has been designing video games for years. Um, worked for some big, big players in the industry like Electronic Arts and done some other startups. And so he's <laughs> always got me, you know, trying games out and stuff. And I kind of find while I'm just sometimes watching TV in the evening, it's just a way to relax little things. And so I've got some heavier duty games, but I thought I would share a, a, a few of the games I like. So first I'll start with this one and it's called Retro Bowl. And I am not a football fan. But I found this game and I, I enjoy it. Um, it's a little old. It's like old school football. So let me go pull up a game here. <laughs> I'm Miami so here. And, and that's what your players look like. And so when I'm playing, I'll just play a little and you guys can kind of see what happens here. So now I've, I've got the ball here. I'm going to try a running play. Oh, got me for only got one yard on that. And so it's a very simple game kind of in the mode of, you know, just sort of old school video games called Retro Bowl. And so I just, and I, and I can play a game, literally I can sit and play like a full, you know, a game on here in five minutes time or whatever. And so it's just something I find relaxing, even though I don't really like football that much. Um, another game that I, I like that's, a little slower paced. Let's see if that'll come up. Can you guys see that? Okay. Building a house this, or something. This, yeah. In fact, what I wanted to do was, hold on. I'm gonna force quit that, that so I can restart it so you guys can actually. It's called Design Home. There's a little lag on my screen here, and so what you do here is you have to design the interior of a room in a home. And um, so, and I, I just enjoy doing this it's kind of my creative side. So this one, I want you to uh, style a modern living room in the city in Taiwan and you do it and then people like vote on them and you're trying to get like, you know, your, your best rating for stuff. And by doing that, you can get like diamonds as you see at the top there and money. So, you know, I'm going to put a couch in here to start with. So let's say modern, I think it said it was. So I'll go to style and I will choose modern. And then let's say if I just, I'm just picking any couch here, I find a couch I want and I put it there. And so you go through and you design all this stuff and it's, you just, I, I enjoy that. It's, 
I've got a background in, in graphic design, art, stuff like that. So I sort of enjoy this stuff. So let's see. Oh, no, here I, got perfect, I got a perfect score on this design that I just did for an office. Whoop, why is it shooting? No, wait, I don't want this. I don't want all design. Stop, guys. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> I don't know why it's, well, it's showing you my some of my designs. I don't know how to <laughs> stop that. So anyway, I find this a very, there's my office, very just relaxing game to sit and just kind of design stuff. And I, I kind of like stuff that doesn't really move that fast. Um, Cause again, I'm just trying to relax and, and so I don't need, you know, stuff moving that fast. Um, so there, there, there's just a couple of those. Um, I cool. thought I would share, I'll let, I'll let other people before I, I, as you guys can see, I have a lot of apps and a lot of games. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I've got a ton I could share with you, but I'll, I'll let other people share theirs. I'll go next. Okay. Hey, Steve. This is called Word Trip. Let me see if I can. That. That. There. Back here, that's what the app looks like, the icon. And, and this, I brought this up on my MacBook, but it's really an app for your phone. And there, can you see? Yes. Uh, yeah. Got a circle of letters down at the bottom. Yeah, you get a circle of usually six or seven letters. And you just figure out words uh, that are spelled out of these. And you can see starting in the upper left, you got three letter words and they are in alphabetical order. Then you get four letter words, they're in alphabetical order and five letter words. And then you're using all six and you play the game by running your finger. And the first word that I see is H E A R T, heart. So somebody else call one. Heater. What's it? Heater. Heater. H-E-A-T-E-R. -E Good one. That That's the seven letter one. Call out another Here. one. Here, H-E-A-R. I'm having trouble understanding you. He said here. -E H-E-A-R. H-E-A-R. There you go. How about hater? H A T E R. Nope, rejected that one. Sometimes <laughs> it will reject perfectly valid words. There. -E. H E A T. I see that one. Keep going. Yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> T H E R E. Everybody talk at once. <laughs> T A R E. T A R E. Nope. Didn't like that one. Really? Uh, here. T E A R. T E A R. Good one. T E H A R. There. T H. T H E R E. Is that what you said? E A R. Yeah. E A R E. Did it put it in R -A -T -E. there? R A T E. I'm having trouble yeah. understanding. You're kind of garbled. R A T E. R A T E. Good. Good. About rat. Okay, you're getting into the three letter ones. R. Okay. Didn't like that one. P A R. A T E. R A T E R. Didn't like that one. I don't understand why it doesn't like some words. Uh, just make the challenge. <laughs> H-A-T. Uh, H-A-T, is that what you said? Yep. Tar. You might need some tar to, to do redo your driveway. Good, good. Okay. R-A-T, rat. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, that already. One. 
Here, H E R E A R E. H A T E. Uh, well, there's, yeah. A R E R. We tried that one. Like e R A era. Nope. R E A T H. Say again. A R E. I said, okay. R E A T H. Wreath. Nope. <laughs> Word. Better not. I need a door. Wreath. Isn't that for a door? W. I'm a, that's a W. w. <laughs> yeah. I'm a phonetic speller. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tell your teachers that. <laughs> we got a. Oh, is there a tree in there? We got something. Yeah, tree. There. What the four letter words are. Oh, there's one more four there's letter one. word. Good. Get that three letter one. We got to fill in that gap right there. What is that? How about ear? E A R? Didn't like it. Eat. E I T. Bingo. Good. How about T, T E A? Good. Uh, then there's the golfing T, T E E. Yeah. Good. Okay, now we got two tough ones. B H R E E. Three. Spell it again slower. T H R E E. -E. Oh, like the number three. Yeah. Yes. One more. T H E R E there. Didn't like that. Why does it not take some valid words? Yeah, that would drive me a little crazy that it didn't take the yeah. words. <laughs> oh, Can you have been play this game in really... French? Beats me. <laughs> you have to go on the uh, the French uh, app store. Got one more here. Come on, let's get to this. We should be able to pick the language in this one. Yes. Now, you look over here. See that right there? Yeah. That's a T. If I tap on that, that'll give me the first letter. How about E T H E R? E T H H E R. How about Earth? E -A there, that's good. There we go. Take some more. And your reward oh is you gosh, that's time. incredible. <laughs> Are you tired of wasting your time on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, I have a question. What is that so game that you mind. connect the numbers? So so Duke, so Duke, uh, so no, that's Duke? adding numbers. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There's one we draw a line from one number to the next number. Oh, no, no, no. It's not like that. It's a colored dots. Two blue dots, two green dots, two yellow dots. How do, oh, what is that game and how does that work? Well, that's a, that's a terrible game. I got to tell you that. That is just a terror to get through, just looking at it. <laughs> it's a, it's um, like you got two blue dots. Uh, you got a circle. And there's two blue dots, two red dots, two yellow dots. And you had to draw a line between the yellow dots, two yellow dots, draw a line between two red dots. And what is that game? And those and those lines can't cross. Yes, correct. They can't cross. What the, is that game? The name I that I have know. seen is just two dots. Yeah. Yeah, it's two dots. You're right. I used to play that quite a bit. How does it Fact, work and how does somebody hold on. do it? I, I can share and show you. Hold on. I've got, I've got it on here. Um, now i got to remember how I share this again. Um, let's see. i got to find it. Um, I have too many games. I told you that. <laughs> I just don't remember where it's at. Oh, here it is. Two dots. There it is. 
Yeah, I used to play this one quite a bit, but I haven't played this in a long time. Um, I don't think I want that. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> okay, what do I need to do? I'm pressing, but nothing's happening here. Oh, it wants oh. me to press that. Okay, well, I don't want to do that, so leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying to show you the game, but it, like. It's like forcing them into doggy domain. Yeah, and I don't know what, like, I've never had this happen before, so. Um, no, I don't want to activate any pre. Hold on, I'm going to force quit that and restart it. Oh, gosh. I've never had this before where like I'm, you know. Now I see a cold front. <laughs> okay, here we go. I had objectives I had to do here. This is a pretty hard thing, it looks like. It says hard. So you have to connect dots of the same color. And, and you can see at the very top there, I've got these different things that I have to, to do to win the, the level. So like if I connect three of the same thing, so I've got to break that ice there. Um, and if I, let's see. So I'm trying to, I've got these objectives at the top and you do it by connecting dots. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. I think so, so, you know, this, this is a pretty hard level and, and I'm only halfway kind of paying attention. Ideally though, what you're trying to do is get squares of four. Okay, so, oh man, it moved on me, dang it. Um, let's see if it comes back. There we go. So I've got four blues here. I'm gonna make a square. When you do that, eliminate all of that color on a screen. Um, like I said, this is a really hard level because I've got to get, I've got to expand. You can see I expanded that blue a little. I've got to get 56 that are covered in that. I've got to break all those and things that are covered like an ice or whatever. And then I've got a, I don't know, these cloud burst things, I guess has something to do with the sun maybe. I don't know. Well, there you go. You can see. So anyway, that's that's kind of how you play the game. You got to connect um, colors, dots of the same color oh, and whatever the, the objectives are. Oh. By the way, while there's, I've a, been, there's another one. It's just a ring. And you had to draw a line between two dots. That's the one I, I was thinking know. of. That's that that is also called two dots. Okay. Anybody here have um Apple Arcade by any chance? Sure. Uh, okay, because there's some games I play through there. Like one, you can get the regular spell tower, but I play the Apple Arcade one. Um, you can see puzzle mode here. Think of like if I if you don't reduce your make you got to make words and if you don't reduce them this grows so um, and and when it hits the top then you're out and so you can see there my high score of all time seventy seven thousand there and I'm on like nine thousand of this um, but I can let's see if I quit to menu. Um, like I can just do a tower. Let's just do that because it's simpler. So what you want to do here is you want to find as you, I'm trying to get as many points as I can. So, um, and if you use the blue letters, I'll get bonuses for that. So anybody see one that they want me to use? <sighs> Good Lord almighty. <laughs> A, B, that's what I can see right now, jab. Down toward the bottom, J-O-T-S, going to the left. Yeah. So since I'm using that, um, it'll also, anytime you use a blue letter, it'll get rid of the whole row. And wow. now you can see it drop. So on this one, tower mode, it comes all the way down. You're trying to get the most points you can before, you know, the whole thing drops. So like, you know, now, if I do that one, prize, 
So on this mode, on tower mode, I'm just trying to see, you know, what are the best, you know, most points I can get before I run out of time. So they have okay. different modes on this that you can play in this. The puzzle one, I just kind of come to it occasionally and play. So it's just a word search kind of thing in these. So that's that's one I like to play there. Right. Um, let me... I don't know how you have time to play anything considering your schedule. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you, Alan, sometimes I will literally, when I'm just feeling stressed in my day and I have five minutes, it's my planning period at school, I might just pull this out. Just It's almost meditative for me. Just a few minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, at home, if I'm just watching a show in the evening and I just want to relax in a way it, it's, I hate to say it's a Zen like thing, but I find with these casual games that when I start to do that, it kind of takes my mind off of everything else a little bit and I'm just playing there. And so I, you know, I, I find it as more of a relaxation thing and it's there are some very big games that I have on there that require a lot of focus, but I kind of like these little casual games because they don't really require a ton of focus. Yeah, that makes sense. Distractions. <laughs> and, it, and as you guys saw by my apps, I have like a million apps on my iPad, so and a million games on there. Yeah. All right. Is your iPad named Game Room? Is it named Game Room? No, why? <laughs> it was a joke. It was a joke because you got so many games. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, you guys can see here. Hold on. I'll, I'll like show you this. I mean, it's ridiculous. What I mean. But like I said, a lot of this stuff, I have a friend who's in the game design business and he, is in, he does some adjunct professor stuff through Stanford and um, teaching game design. And so there are a lot of times that the two of us will kind of back and forth. Hey, check this game out and how it's designed. And, and so there's, I just have a ton of games on here that I don't really get rid of. And just as an example, like, okay, I've got board and arcade games here, you know, and some of these, like you guys see, I've got Monopoly on here or, you know, Ticket to Ride. I, I've always appreciated. Have you ever heard of that? Um, you know, there's just all kinds of, of odd games that I try on here. Um, these are all kind of word and, you know, number games. You probably all remember like two two zero four eight. Maybe some of you guys remember that. Um, then I've got a lot of kind of card and dice games. Um, I like to sit and play hearts, things like that. Um, Rummy Cube, I enjoy playing. That's actually online with other players. Um, mm -hmm. I've got some different sports games and things that I, I like to play around with. Um, got some, some auto racing games that I've played around with as well. Although I tend to not like those as much because they move a lot faster and I prefer just kind of stuff that's a little slower paced. Um, my son and I like to play around with some of the space or you know flight simulator stuff and do some of that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, let's see, just some like, I don't know, war adventure sim kind of stuff that I play around with. So I've got a lot of games in there. Anyway. Different world. Anybody else have a game they want to share before we move on? Okay, then our next item is actually carry over from last month that we talked about how to eliminate um, duplicates in your uh, photos app on your iPhone or iPad, I suppose. And Alan's had a way to do that. So Alan, you want to talk to us about that? Okay. Do you want me to pull up my photos or should I just talk about it? Well, if you want to pull up and show us how it works, that'd be great. Yeah. I'll have to look at this, see if I can connect with Zoom with. Do I? Oh. OK, here others, please join Wi-Fi and cellular data. Recording in progress.
All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Got the echo working. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, turn the sound off on your phone. I, I did. did. Only don't let me take it to zero though. All right. How do I show the screen though? Um, Just go over to uh yeah, share in there. Oops. Okay, that doesn't work. Are you connected? Is your phone connected to your back with a cable? No, it's just connected to uh, to Zoom. Here, I'm going to turn the screen up. Ah. Uh -huh. I have a question. I found that if I use Zoom on my iPad or my iPhone, the volume up and down controls do not work. And I can't choose what volume to have uh, Zoom speaking to me at. How do you override uh, and, uh, and to be able to adjust the volume of how loud Zoom plays? <coughs> Never use it on my phone. Yeah, or on the iPad. yeah I've, I haven't tried it on one of those. So just now is the only time I've ever used it. And I had the audio disabled, so I didn't get an echo. Because I, I know a while back I was having Zoom meetings that were all night, that lasted all night. And it was like a little bit disturbing to someone who was sleeping, but the meetings were like in Sweden. There Maybe is a set headphones or something. Yeah, but if you can't adjust the volume, it's too loud. There is a second volume control. If you pull down the upper right corner on your phone, and that goes to, uh, what are those? Is that the control panel? Yeah. That that's yeah. And uh, on my phone, there's two sliders. One is for screen brightness, and the other is for volume. Yeah, that's the one I was trying to use. Okay. Did that work? Nope. Zoom nope. just uh, all says this is how loud it's going to be, and it's stuck. I find that hard to believe. There's not another way to control that, though. I mean, you might do a do some research out there and just do a search and see if other people are having a similar issue or how they fixed that or why your buttons don't work with Zoom. Under the mute button in the far left bottom of the screen there's a thing that says audio if you click on the little arrow there's all sorts of audio settings that come up maybe somewhere in there you can find one that'll fix what you want to do well shall i go on yeah i've ready? given up on that i'm just going to show you what i do uh, <laughs> i have twenty-three thousand pictures or something like that on here but some of them are duplicates so if you click the uh, album button and then go to the bottom of this, there is a duplicate. You guys can't read that, can you? Yeah, I can read it. Lift it just a little bit more, Al. Lift it. It says duplicates. All right. So they show you the pictures that are duplicated. And you just, and I have, what I did is I had uh, had trouble with my Apple ID. And so I had to disconnect my Apple ID from my computer. And it says, do you want to save your pictures? And I said, sure. So then when it, I reconnected and reconnected to the Apple ID, it put all the pictures that I had saved on my computer back up there for a duplicate. So I just, you just have to, to look at these, if I select one of these, and it says, oh, yeah. Ah, no, I'm on the wrong one. I didn't get that, I did the, the hidden. Oh, here, here's the one. It shows two pictures, and then you just say, Merge these. It says duplicates are classified both as exact copies that may have different metadata as well as photos that appear to be the same that may have new unique 
resolutions, file formats, or other slight differences. So if you happen to mark somebody with a photo or put a name on a picture, it will save that. If they're exactly the same, which a bunch of these are, uh, you just select the photo. And so I would just say, merge this. And then it says two exact photos. And I just say, delete it. And it brings the next one up. And so you just go through it. And it says two exact photos, duplicate it. So it's just, you know, when you have thousands of them, it just yeah. gets to be. It takes gross. a while, you're right. <laughs> right. And then if you if you look back at the duplicates back here, you can see the ones recently deleted. And so it got a it it locks them. I got to use face ID. And so it shows the ones and it's you know, it's 29 days for the ones we just deleted. And then at the top of this, as you see, I've been deleting a lot. It says, well, the ones up here have red on it are the ones that are going to be deleted. You know, if I can go through and delete them forcedly, but if I just wait 30 days, they all go away. Could you back up to the beginning how you got to that screen where it shows all right, the duplicates? You just, you just click on the little blue thing that says albums, and then you have I got to go back to albums. <clears throat> so my albums say this is all my pictures, and this is several albums that I've I've created, and then below that are shared albums, and then shared albums, and then below that I've got you know when you label people's pictures, so you can say people's pictures, and you have the the map of where you've taken all the pictures if you have GPS data on it. And this is down below that. It just goes down media type. You can say all the pictures that you have are live photos, how many selfies, and they keep classifying them down here. And then utilities comes at the bottom down. Oh, no. I think I touched something. <laughs> I can't see what I'm seeing there. But down at the very bottom, there are imports yep. and duplicates and hidden photos and recently deleted. I'm not sure if I can, you can see all that. Okay, I must not have any duplicates because that's not an option on mine. Interesting. But you can get down that far. So, I mean, I didn't have them until. Under utilities, it doesn't show any duplicates? So you uh -huh. have to go to albums and then just scroll down to utilities and it should show un imports, duplicates, hidden and recently deleted. And you might have some recently deleted pictures. You're always, I'm always taking junk shots I, I throw away that are automatically deleted a, a month later. Yeah, so my, I might, I'm sorry. I might sit there half an hour and throw away about five or 600 pictures and then I wait on the day. It works the same on a, on a computer. If you go to your photos album. Possibly. App. app, app um, in the far left-hand column, one of the choices is duplicates, if you have any. And if you click on that, they'll start coming up just like they do on the phone. And if you, sometimes you get, I've had three or four that are the same and you say as soon as they'll say merge all four you click that it'll get rid of three of them out of the four if it says they have different metadata like maybe even the size of the file is different then if you click it'll say merge and if you merge it'll save whatever is the highest resolution photo plus it'll save any metadata so if one was named but one wasn't It'll save all that information together. So you can get, it's a really good thing for getting rid of duplicates on your phone or your computer. There used to be special apps you could get to download to do that. Uh, and then they added this feature and I, I think it's only been there about a year. Yeah. And like Alan says, it takes a while if you've got a lot of duplicates, but it does free up a lot of space on your um, phone or your computer eventually. 
at once they're deleted, which like he says, takes 30 days, is it, Alan? Right. For them to completely go away. Yeah. But you need to have 30 days to bring them back if you need to. Right. Okay, any, any questions about that, anybody? No, so thanks, is, Alan. Is there a third party utility that will examine your photos and and do this kind of in one fell swoop and have, instead of having to manually do it one at a time? John, I would be very years ago, but it's still careful wasn't. about using that because you don't know if it'll actually do that or just eliminate stuff randomly. You never know. So I wouldn't trust other things, but unless you read a good, really, really good review of some piece of software app that would do that. Okay, um, our next item, let's see, is um, oh, the Apple Card Savings Account. And I think Steve's going to talk to that. Um, we've talked about using your Apple. Um, I forget what it's called <laughs> to pay your dues and such. But anyway, Steve, a, a newer thing is the Apple Savings Account. Okay, let me bring it up. Hopefully, I'll do it better this time. <laughs> Two. We see a man. There. I don't see a screen. Okay, do you see a slide that says last month Apple Pay Later? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Last month I gave a presentation on Apple Pay Later, which lets you take out a short term loan of up to a thousand dollars interest free. Got a lot of attention. This month. Come on, there you go. This month, we'll look at another way Apple is delving into the finance business. It's called the Apple Card Savings Account. And this is a video that does a very good job of explaining how Apple Card, Wallet, Apple Cash, and Apple Card Savings Account all interact. And after the video, it's, it's a little over eight minutes long, excuse me, just under eight minutes long. Afterwards, I'll go over the highlights and uh, make a few comments. So let me bring up William Lee. Can you see the dude? Yes. Yeah. Good looking guy, don't you think? Oh. This week, Apple announced the availability of its new high yield savings account, which is launching with Goldman Sachs. I'm gonna explain where this new savings account fits in Apple's line of financial products show how easy it is to get the savings account with a quick demo showing me signing up for it. And finally, give a review of the product with both pluses and minuses. So let's jump right in. Now, I'll admit, when I first heard this savings account product was coming, I didn't really get it. Who's going to put money into an Apple savings account? That initial reaction, though, was probably because I did not yet have the Apple credit card, another product I didn't feel I needed. That is, only until I researched them. Now, however, I see what I was missing, and I'm happy to share with you what makes savings a great addition to the Apple Card and Apple's growing set of financial products. To understand it, let's look at where the savings account fits in. For folks who are less familiar, here's the financial product line of Apple. On Apple devices, iPhones, iPads, watches, and Macs, but not on Android devices, is a software application called the Apple Wallet. The Apple Wallet is used to store digital versions of your credit and debit cards, driver's licenses, and other IDs, airline boarding passes, tickets to entertainment events, and many other things. One of the things in your wallet is something called Apple Cash. This is an electronic prepaid debit card, which is used in various ways in the wallet ecosystem to hold cash. Note that you do not earn any interest on cash that you hold in Apple Cash. Embedded in the wallet is a functionality called Apple Pay. Apple Pay is the payment mechanism to move money around. It uses, at your discretion, the credit cards in your wallet to make payments, and it uses the debit cards, specifically Apple Cash, to make payments or receive and hold cash. Now, in 2019, Apple, working with Goldman Sachs, launched its own credit card called the Apple Card. Like any other credit card, you need to fill out an application and be approved in order to get credit. You can easily do this process right on your Apple device. If approved, you do get a physical credit card if you request one, 
but the primary card is intended to be just an electronic version of the Apple card that is stored in your Apple wallet. I applied earlier today for the Apple card right on my iPhone. You apply inside the wallet app. It was incredibly simple and fast to do, taking me about three to four minutes in total to apply, and I got instant approval for a credit line. Honestly, it couldn't have been easier or faster to do. This review isn't about the Apple card, though, so I won't go into great detail about it, but it's very relevant to the savings account, so I'll summarize by saying that I signed up for the Apple card because the rewards are very good with up to 3% cash back, meaning a rebate on your purchases. There are no fees other than the interest charge, if that even applies to your purchase, and the software user interface on the Apple hardware is excellent, providing simple tools for the user to see, understand, and manage their credit card balance and payments. This brings us to the savings account. Here's why it matters. The rewards from the Apple card is something they called daily cash. When you make a purchase with the Apple card, you get the cash rebate as soon as the payment processor approves the purchase transaction. They don't wait for you to pay for the purchase before you get the rebate, and they don't wait for the end of the month or some other future date. You get the cash as soon as the charge is approved. So where does the daily cash go? Well, before there was a savings account, the daily cash went into your Apple Cash account, or it does not earn any interest. As a consumer, therefore, I had no incentive to keep any cash there. Now, though, with the savings account, the daily cash by default goes into the savings account, where it will earn 4.15% interest instead of the Apple Cash account, where it would have earned nothing. Now, let's not kid ourselves. Four-ish percent interest isn't life-changing. It's a whole lot better than zero. And now I'd be perfectly happy to let my daily cash accumulate there rather than try to use it immediately or move it somewhere else. To summarize, therefore, the Apple savings account is quite literally simply a savings account, similar to what you could get at any bank to get the savings account. However, you do have to have an Apple card. Again, though, that is very easy and fast to get, assuming you have acceptable credit. Once you have the Apple card account, you can easily sign up for the savings account right on your Apple device. In fact, I'm gonna sign up right now on my iPhone to show how it's done. Okay, starting with the wallet, we go into the wallet. This is the Apple card, the bottom credit card, the new one that I just got today. Tap on that, it opens up. Upper right-hand corner, you got a circle with three dots. Tap on that. Here we have daily cash, go in there. Now tap on savings, setup, right here in the middle. Earn 4.15% APY in your daily cash. Hit continue. I'll put in my information, social security number. Tap next. Terms and conditions, you can read them. I'm not going to. Almost there. The IRS requires you to confirm the following. Have you been notified that you're subject to backup withholding? No for me. Confirm and open account. Opening an account. Account created. That was it. Now we can add money if we want uh, to put money in from somewhere else or withdraw if we had money in the account. But that was it. I now have an Apple Card savings account. So that's all there was to opening an account. Fast and easy. Once the savings account is opened, there's a nice savings dashboard in the wallet, which we just looked at, where you can easily see balances, the interest rate that you're earning, and move money in and out of the account. As of right now, Apple's paying a 4.15% APY interest rate on the balances, although that can change at any time. This isn't the highest rate around, but it's pretty competitive for online savings account rates, and it is FDIC insured for up to the maximum account balance of $250,000. You can transfer money in and out of the account with no fees. There's no minimum deposit, no minimum balance requirements, and no service charges or maintenance fees. That said, you can't really do anything with the money in the account. It just sits there and earns interest. You can't directly spend money from the account or make purchases. To use the money, you need to move it back out of the account. You can put it on the Apple Cash debit card and make purchases with that, or you can pay your Apple Card credit card bill. That's it. You couldn't use it to pay other household bills, for example. To do that, you'd have to first send the money to another bank which you can do as an ACH. So in that sense, the account has somewhat limited usefulness. Finally, I didn't mention it before, but if you wanted to, you can transfer cash in from another bank 
into the savings account and earn the 4.15% interest on that too. So what purpose did the savings account serve? Well, for Apple, because they are effectively offering their customers loans through Apple Card, money from all the savings accounts cumulatively becomes one source of funds for Apple to use when extending that credit, the same as how banks work. So this provides Apple some cash. As for Apple customers, it makes it much more attractive for them to keep some of their cash in the Apple wallet ecosystem because now they can earn interest on it. This isn't a game changer, but it's definitely a nice improvement to the wallet and yet another reason to use the excellent Apple card rather than some other credit card. And that's it. Hope that was helpful. There you go. What I like most about the uh, savings account is how you can do everything on your phone. Also, you can make an unlimited number of withdrawals at any time with no penalty, no fees, no minimum balance required. A deposit starts earning interest on the day that it's made, and the interest is added to your balance on the last day of the month. As with any uh, bank account, you must be 18 have a social security number and be a U.S. resident. You must have an active Apple card in your phone's wallet app. And you have to set up two-factor authentication for your Apple ID, which is really easy to do in your iPhone settings. And you must have the latest version of iOS. Uh, again, as he said, you cannot spend money directly from the savings account. You must first tap on withdraw, then you can send it over to Apple Cash, or you can transfer it to your bank account. And also the FDIC limits your balance to $250,000. And I'm sure all of us are heartbroken to, to learn that. So. <laughs> Steve, I got a question about uh, if you've frozen your uh, credit, so there's no one else can open up an account and you're, you can't open up any new accounts. Is that you have to unfreeze your credit through scores? through the credit agency before you can open up this thing? Do you think that's probably true? Probably. I have no idea, but that sounds likely. Yeah, we went to the credit reports a couple, couple of years ago on the scares and said, well, we don't need any new accounts and we don't want anybody opening any new accounts in our name. So we locked them. Okay, well, you could temporarily unlock them long uh -huh. enough to create this account. And when everything is set up, see if you can lock it again. So yeah, that was just a thought. Yeah, that's just a warning. Okay, these are, some, uh, these are some items that I thought I uh, need to keep in mind. There is a lag between you when you make a deposit and when the amount is available for withdrawal. Once you create the savings account, any cash back you get from using your Apple Card is deposited deposited into the savings account instead of Apple Cash. But that's good because Apple Cash does not pay interest. Finally, interest rates are subject to change depending on the whims of the Federal Reserve. That's good. Yeah, the national average of interest rates on savings accounts is 0.35%. <laughs> Most banks offer CDs at rates of 5% or higher but you cannot withdraw the money until the term of the CD is passed without a substantial penalty. A review in Business Insider said this, while Apple's starting yield of 4.15% isn't the highest for a high yield savings account, there is something Apple offers that few others do, and that is convenience. At least convenience for iPhone users who already have an Apple card as the savings account integrates into the iPhone's wallet app. This is my experience. Uh, Apple announced the availability of the savings account on uh, the 17th of April. I created my account on the 18th by depositing $4.69 that I had in Apple Cash. Creating the cap, the, uh, the account and transferring the money took less than a minute. I then transferred a larger amount from my checking account. That also took less than a minute. And then on Sunday the 30th, the last day of the month, 
a message popped up on my phone saying interest had been added to my savings account. And that evening, I made another transfer from my savings account. The next morning, on May 1st, the deposit I made the evening before was in my balance. The following Thursday morning, the deposit I had made on Sunday was available for withdrawal. Later that day, I made a purchase using my Apple Pay and my Apple Card. On Friday the 5th, the cash back reward was added to my savings account. Now notice, if I had left the amount I deposited in my checking account, it would have earned 0.005%. That's Commerce Bank. And it says right there on uh, my account page, checking account earns 0.005%. Well, the same amount in Apple Card savings account earned more than 800 times that much. On Friday evening, as a test, I withdrew $5 and transferred it to Apple Cash. The transfer was instant. I also could have transferred it to my checking account, and it would have taken a day or two to post. Here's a screenshot of my phone, and I've obscured the numbers because I don't want you to see how much money I got. But it shows the buttons for withdrawing or adding money to the account. You tap one of those options, and it will then ask how much. If it's a withdrawal, it will ask if you want to send, send it to Apple Cash or to your bank account, and a deposit works in a similar way. Last few comments. This is gonna knock you out. According to Forbes Magazine on April 17th, the day Apple launched Apple Card Savings Account, deposits reached nearly $400 million. By the fourth day, deposits were nearly a billion dollars. Wow. <laughs> By the end of the week, about 240,000 accounts had been created. A lot of banks were screaming, I bet. Oh yeah, you know they are. Goldman Sachs is just, they're just drooling over this. The second item, uh, there's always somebody who has to find fault. And some advisors say that what Apple is doing could be tempting to people who tend to overspend. So the solution is don't overspend. And finally, other commentators say Apple's savings account is probably more appealing to users who are accustomed to technology. If you are a fan of Apple products and are comfortable with how easy and secure their devices and services are, then this is a great way to save money to achieve goals. And finally, here are some links. Uh, the sources of information, the video, uh, the Business Insider, the complete review, and the Goldman Sachs account agreement. So you can uh, refer to all those if you want. Questions, comments, concerns? No, Steve, that was very thorough. Thanks so much. Here's one question. Well, no, you've answered actually. I think now they think about it. <laughs> Never mind. There were two leading bugs the Wall Street Journal, I think, disclosed about uh, how thieves can steal phones and get into Apple accounts. And so, that's something to keep in mind, but I don't do my finances on my phone. I don't have any financial apps for any bank whatsoever on my phone, and I do not use Apple Wallet. Well, Terry, I hear you, but I, I think there couldn't be a more safer way with the way they're doing things now. What Do you pay by check? Um, I use online bill pay at my home computer. For paying bills. People could hack that. Terry, you left out the whole explanation the, um, of what uh, Wall Street what, Journal said. The, the first uh, one, uh, there was two ways I think that they had of stealing Apple ID. The first one involved them looking over your shoulder for your passcode. And once they have your passcode, if they grab your phone, then they can actually change the password of your Apple ID. Without knowing the password of your Apple ID. They don't, you don't have to know the old password to, uh, to set a new password on your Apple ID. So you could take your phone, just put in your, um, your um, passcode, and then go into the settings and change the Apple ID 
the, I mean, the password of your Apple ID. And so people's Apple accounts can be stolen that way. But Terry, you said right at the beginning, somebody has to look over your shoulder and see that happening. First of all, I do all my banking stuff when I'm sitting here at home. So nobody's going to be looking over my shoulder. And the second thing is, if you're doing it in public, then you just got to watch where you are and who's around you. And use well, face, the, and you use face ID. As, yeah, that would uh, pay it. Oh, no, uh, MacMost video, uh, MacMost, um, he did a video saying that's one reason why you want to use the face ID in a public place. Right. Um, so that's a solution uh, for that. Um, Terry, what was this thing about the uh, key code? There's an encryption key. Um, yeah, I'm partially remembering that one. Um, they can, um, if they get in your phone, I think that also starts with the passcode. Then they can set a um, recovery key on your Apple ID that you wouldn't have. And they can use that to um, take your Apple ID away from you so you can't recover it even. Well, they should anyway, have it's your phone with your, with your uh, pass key to it. Um, this is why Mac most YouTube channel uh, is telling iPhone users, be sure to use your uh, face ID for opening up your phone in a public place because um, that doesn't get, that doesn't unlock your phone enough for you to put in your, um, uh, you uh, to your change your Apple ID. Because if you want to change your Apple ID, Apple. You put in your uh, iPhone pin. Apple requires you to use the two-factor authentication too. That is an extra layer of security. Uh, oh. Anybody could steal your phone, but, but with two-factor authentication, it makes it next to impossible for them to get access to the information. If they have your so, phone. Well, if, if they have your phone, I've heard of people doing that, right? They have the phone in the passcode. There's a lot they can do. Now, what I don't understand are people who still insist on writing checks. Um, <laughs> a month ago, we sent a check as a wedding gift to some relatives. They still have not deposited that check, and I'm wondering what happened to it. If anybody got hold of that check, they've got my routing number and my account number right there, and you could use that. I hate writing checks. And you've so heard of check washing, haven't you, Steve? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. where they just take the check and, and eliminate the writing on it and write what they want on it. Uh, use the Uniball 207 pen to control that. What? The Uniball 207 pen has a fraud safe ink that can't be washed out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever. Good for you. Well, that the pluses so far outweigh the minuses, the risk. And Apple, what they have set up is the most secure system there is. I mean, nothing else comes close to it. And I'm confident I'm already earning a lot of interest on money that would otherwise be sitting there doing nothing. And uh, we have some large expenses that we know are gonna come up in July and August. And rather than let it sit in my checking account where it's earning pennies, uh, we're gonna get a nice uh, uh, return and we can transfer it out anytime. So I really like this new savings account and uh, we tend to take advantage of it in the future, especially with the stock market as volatile as, as it is. That's where our investments are for our retirement and it's just up and down and up and down, but this is consistent. That's it, that's all I have. Okay. I'll send out some links about these stuff I was mentioning on the Gamma list. Say that again. I didn't catch. I'll send out some links about the uh, ways the thieves can steal your Apple ID. I've, I've read, read the article you're talking about, at least yeah. one of them, because I, I meant the same things you mentioned. But if you're careful with what you do, none of that's going to be affecting you. So I don't know. Yeah, right, like we, got, post, we have to move on. Our next thing like is the Mac most YouTuber said, uh, be sure to use the face ID function. Well, yeah, you're right, Tammy. If you use that, you're much safer than just the passcode. Okay, the next thing is the rapid security update, which I'm sure all of you on any of your devices probably recently saw that come up. And what's interesting is I was with my sister this past weekend 
and she has just acquired an iPhone a little while back. And she said to me, this thing about rapid security update came on my phone. She didn't know what to do with it. So it was a surprise. And I said, you should actually do that. It's security. It'll actually make your phone more secure. And let's uh, show you, let's see, I got to find where I put it, the information about that. Okay. Have you all noticed that come up on your phone or your iPad or your Yes, computer? just recently, right? Just recently. Okay, let me. Can you see this article? Yeah. Apple just issued. It came out, it seems to me, within the past week. I don't know exactly what day anymore, but it's for fixing security issues. And basically, all you have to do is let it run. Notice it's 16.4.1a, and the a is because it's this small software update. And instead of being like two, three gigabytes, which often many of these updates were in the past, this one was only like 85.6 megabytes. So unlike taking an hour or two that it might have on your old, your previous devices updates, it took like, seemed to me five minutes or so. It was very fast, very quick, and doesn't even put your device down for very long. So this little article I'll include on our website, just like all the stuff we've recently seen, like Steve's presentation and so on. Um, and it's easy to install. You just go through and it's an update. So in my computer, it was just in the update section. And like I said, even in the computer, it only took, gosh, I think I stepped away from the computer and it was, it was done by the time I stepped back after I got a drink. So it's very quick, it's safe, and it actually makes your computer safer because you're getting the security updates that you need. Has everybody done it on their devices? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Again, it's very good, it's very safe. And like I said, short and sweet, which is one of the best things about it because most of the old security updates have been, like on my computer, gosh, I could walk away for an hour before it would be done. So that's all we have to say about that unless there's any co comment about it. Just Didn't Apple use to do security updates that way on the Mac? Just a I don't know. I, I read somewhere that this was an, a new thing that Apple figured out how to send just these small updates. Because in the past, it seems like they, they were always very large. The only thing that was ever small was like it was just updating Safari or something. I think it's a great idea, frankly, that, you know, because sometimes I cringe and go, oh, you know, it's going to take forever to run this update. Yeah. And especially, you know, with all the devices I have and then trying to update everything. So I, I think it's kind of a very convenient a nice way to do that. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, I just read this afternoon that um, I'm trying to remember what yeah, I'm looking at my phone next week. Um, Apple's going to be releasing the 10 or 10 16.5 update for iOS and other devices. Um, I believe iPad OS and Watch OS and stuff. There's gonna be a bunch of updates next week. That'd be cool. Well, actually, Glenn, we're moving on to you. What goodies do you have for us this month? Then? Well, I, I will sort of have to pick and choose on this because I don't think I can get this done in the next 25 minutes or so. Um, so no, we can always run over. If people need to leave, they can leave. All right, let's see. There we go. Can you guys all see it? Yep. All right. Daisy. Nice, nice little spring scene there for you guys. All right. My lawn, you'd see dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. We were talking about photos before because the first thing I have in here is you know, and, and Alan mentioned tagging faces. Um, and so I thought I would put a little how-to on that if you're using it um, on your Mac. 
and you want to, you know, tag people's faces. So open your photos and on your sidebar there on the click on the people thing on the, the left on the sidebar. Um, and it'll already come populated with some faces. You guys probably recognize some of those faces there. Um, and so once you click there, you're going to see faces. And then when you hover your cursor over a picture, and you can see it there on the one with Steve Jobs, it'll say, because you see the little cursor there, and it'll say a little plus and a name will pop up. And so if you click that, you just type in a name, and then it'll start asking you to match it with other possible matches and photos in your um, you know, photos app. You can do the same thing on an iPhone, just open photos and go to albums to people, then tap on a face and type in a name at the top. And so that's how you can start tagging that. And um, also if you scroll down after like, you know, these are all Steve Jobs. If you scroll down, you can see where it says confirm additional photos and it'll start going through your library and popping up photos that it thinks might be of the same person. And uh, sometimes I laugh at that because some of them are, oh yeah, that's it. But other times I get stuff, I'm like, that doesn't even look anything like that person. Yeah, um, I do that too. So, you know, basically it's just a nice way to tag photo people. And, and if you've done that, you know, you can always, if you're searching for photos of, you know, a certain person, um, you know, it's, it's kind of easy to find, oh, where are all my pictures of, you know, Bob and my, you know, photos app. And, and so you can kind of go through and find those much easier. So the second thing I, I have for you guys tonight is, um, you know, where to find the Apple Care information on your device. And, and this may be like kind of a simple thing, but I don't know about you guys, but Apple keeps changing where this is. And it frustrates the heck out of me. Anybody ever, has anybody ever experienced this going, where the heck do I find this stuff? And it's different on every device. And so I thought I would just kind of real quickly go through here. So, you know, if you're on an iPhone, um, go into your settings to general and to the about. Um, go down and click to general to about and then to coverage. And so... What will happen there is once you click on coverage, it'll come up and it'll show you your coverage there. And so you can um, click on that and it'll give you your information. And yeah, my coverage is long expired on this iPhone 11 uh, Pro Max here. So, um, and that's where you'll find on the iPhone. So again, it's just in settings, general, about, and then coverage. Um, on the iPad, if you go into settings and then you go to general, there is actually just a specific, it just says Apple Care Plus there. And once you click on that, it will show you, you know, the information on your device. And then on your Mac, if you go into settings and it goes general, and again, you go up to the top there about and then you will find Apple Care Plus details there. So it's slightly different on each device. And I have found that to be maddening over the years because every time I think I know where to look, Apple seems to change its where the place is. And so I, I, I guess I was looking for something just a few weeks ago and I was like, where the heck did they put it now? And so I thought, you know, I, I don't know if any of you, if you guys find this useful or not, but hopefully you do just you know, where you can find it on, on each device. Oops, sorry, I forgot the last little screens for Apple Care there. If you had Apple Care on the Mac, you got to hit details, and then it shows you that. Um, I don't know why this went back. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Um, another new little interesting feature that's come out recently is... Um, there is now the ability to dim videos that have like flash containing flashes of light. So if you are like really sensitive to bright lights or real flashes of light, or you get lightheaded or, or even prone to seizures from like really intense flashing, um, Apple's kind of created a way that 
will help reduce that intensity of, of the light flashes. And so in Mac OS Ventura 13.3, um, Apple added an accessibility option that will dim video whenever it detects a flash of light or any kind of strobe effect. So if you're somebody that that kind of bothers, bothers you, you can, you know, enable this feature. And so the way you do this on your Mac is go into settings and select accessibility in the left-hand pane, and then click on display in the right-hand pane there. And then you can toggle the switch next to where it says dim flashing lights, and you got to put that in the on position. And that will, will set that up for you. If on an iOS, an iPad OS, TV OS, they all have the same capability that you can set up. And so it's under settings, and you go to accessibility, and then click on vision, and then select motion from the right pane, and you just Again, toggle the switch next to dim flashing lights. So, um, so anyway, so if you're somebody that is kind of bothered by that stuff, then, you know, there's now a way to, I, I haven't really tried it because I'm not bothered by the light, but um, so I, I can't actually give you feedback on, on how well it works, but nonetheless, there, there's that in there if some of you want to try that. All right. Has anybody here ever tried turning auto corrections off on your phone by any chance? No, you nope. Go on. no because I like it. <laughs> well, there's plenty of times that it drives me crazy with the corrections it makes. Agreed. So I, actually, I, I tried turning it off and, and I decided that was even worse than having it on. <laughs> when I'm trying to type on my little phone with my, with my buttons. <laughs> so. Um, you know, I, I, as I started playing around with autocorrect, the whole thing is you can actually make new autocorrects for your phone that will things that you do that will make your life a little easier, you know, or, or shortcut shortcuts you can create on your own. So if you want to do this, go to, you know, settings and to general and then go into keyboard. And once you click on keyboard, when you go in here, you can select text replacement. Now, when you select text replacement, in the you're going to see all the little things that are already in there. So, like if you type BTW, it'll be by the way. And so you probably have used stuff like that before. Well, on the upper right hand corner, there's a little plus sign. And if you click that, you can add your own shortcuts. So as an example here, um, it comes up in the phrase, you type the word or phrase that you want, you know, to have an autocorrect for, and then the shortcut box, type the shortcut you want to use for this, and then you click save when you're finished. So I just thought, okay, I don't want to have to type out my name. I just put my initials there. I can just hit, I can just type GH and now it'll put my name in there and anything that I'm typing on the phone. So it's just I, I've made my own little shortcut to do that. And, and you can do this with anything, really. Um, you can also make shortcuts or symbols for shortcuts. So um, here's one that I just I created when I was playing with this. This way, I don't have to type out my email. And, and you can see what I use as my shortcut there. Um, by the way, I made sure to put two of these. Otherwise, every time I use that symbol, my email would pop up. So I put two of them back to back. Um, I would say to me, the hardest thing about when you create these, you know, shortcuts is that you've got to remember what the heck you use later. So if you can't remember that, then it probably won't work well for you. Um, so yeah, there you go. You can create your own little, you know, shortcuts and text replacement stuff that auto, the whole autocorrect feature will use. All right, um, how are we doing on time here? Okay, trying to kind of trying to keep it moving along quickly here tonight. So there is an application that I came across that um, I've used a few times that I have. It's called Mac Whisper Audio Transcription. And it's a, a cool little app that will do text transcriptions 
from audio files. And so when you open the app, it, you know, you've got the app window and you just literally drag a file onto the window of the app and it's going to start generating a transcript of the audio. Um, you can also use this if you want to speak into the microphone. Um, so right now, if I had that running and it would be transcribing what I'm saying as I'm saying it. That's supposedly, cool. it, supposedly it can work from video as well, but I have not been successful with getting that to work. So I, I you know, if you try this, I, I recommend not using it. Um, the app is free, but there is a pro level that costs, well, it's 17 euros, so about $18. Um, and if you go to the pro level, it allows you to use different languages. It supposedly has better accuracy. And you can also have the ability to export the transcript in different formats. And so I, I give you the, the link here where you can find that app at. Um, and the, for the system requirements, the developer has a thing on their page that says, to use the medium and large models, your Mac should have more than eight gigs of RAM. Performance on older Intel-based Macs can also be bad, but I have not been able to test this properly. So that's a little disclaimer that is on their website. And so you can see here kind of what this looks like. Um, and so I just, as I'm just using here, I was at a, a coaching clinic that Mizzou's track coach was giving about Javelin. And so I, I just, that I had like was, I had an audio recording of, um, actually had a video recording of it, but I was just using transcribing the audio because um, I had a separate audio recording. And you can see here, um, it took, it says it finished in four minutes, 10 seconds. It transcribed this. And um, it, it, it's a little disjointed when you look at it because it went with, he was demonstrating things and showing you things on a video as he was giving this talk. And then you can see the, you know, you can export it, but you will notice there, you got a pro version to export it into like a PDF, for instance. but I don't need the pro version because it gives me the ability to do it in a text file or like a Word doc. So that works just fine for me. And um, I, I've tried this, you know, multiple times with stuff and it seems to work pretty well. So that's Mac Whisper audio transcription. Um, and it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a cool little app. All right. Um, I have a, another little um, app. Whoop that I wanna share with you here. And it's called Bartender. It's, it's Bartender 4 because it's the fourth version of it, needless to say. And as they say, take control of your menu bar. And this is something I've had on my Mac for a while. And I've got a, just a little video here that will tell you about it. Hi everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Can Dan. you guys and hear this that? Is a see it? Of the change log. The change log yeah. is a show where I take you through some of the app updates that I think are most exciting. This is a special episode because this is the first time I'm doing an episode about an app that I did not use previously because I didn't get value from it. And this update has actually given me enough features to make me buy into the new app. So I spent $10 today on Bartender 4, which just came out. Let me walk you through some of the features. So this may sound trivial, but the biggest change for me is something they're calling Quick Reveal, which lets you hover over your menu bar to bring up Bartender. So all of your icons are here. And when I unhover, they all go away. Previously, you had to click this button, which worked, but was just a little too much friction for me and made it seem more trouble than it's worth. This new method is much quicker, and I like it a lot. Additionally, if I go into the bartender preferences, I can see some settings here. Uh, there's the setting for the delay, so I can set more or less of a delay for how long I want to hover over the menu before items show up and disappear. Uh, but I want to go to menu bar layout which has been modified from the previous version. So you can see things that are always shown. I have Fantastical always shown because I like seeing the date and I like being able to join my meetings very quickly. And then everything else is hidden and new menu bar items. Like if I install a new app, it goes over here as well. Uh, but you can move these around like you used to. They've added spacers. So you can see I have a space between my system settings and then Fantastical. So I have a little extra space to make sure I always hit that right. Uh, that's really nice. Um, you will also notice a feature for Big Sur. I'm going to go back here for a second. Uh, there's some spacing options. So you can use Big Sur's default spacing. You can move them to how Mac OS used to be spaced in the menu bar. And you can have no spacing if you want to take up as little room as possible. That's really useful on laptops. If you just want to have a ton of information shown, you just want to take up less space. 
Another really cool thing they've added is something called show for updates. Now, this makes it so that certain things like airport, battery, time machine, these will show up dynamically in the menu bar based on what happens. So I have a battery set to not display in the menu bar, but when I'm on battery power, I do want it to show. And I can edit that to be very specific. So I can say when I reach a certain level, less than 22% of the battery, then I can uh, have a display in the menu bar or when it reaches a very low level or when I set it to a specific charge amount. So that's really nice to see. And then it's not just Apple things, you can add your own. So anything you currently have in the menu bar, you can set up a custom rule to have it show up. So for example, maybe I don't want to see Creative Cloud all the time, but I do want to see when there's an update. So I can click on this and say, create show for update. And then it's going to say, okay, when should I show this? Because it has no idea when to show this. And so I can show when item is compared against a saved image or when script returns true. And so the script returns true is actually writing a script, which I don't know how to do. So I'm not going to do this, but I can do compare the image to what it normally is. So right now, this is what the image is. And so I know that Adobe Creative Cloud shows a red dot when there's something uh, that you can act on, like an app update or some sort of news item. So I could say when it does not match, show it for 15 seconds up here. And that'll be kind of like a notification. I can set it for as long as I want, uh, but yeah, I can just have it show up there. And that's great. Uh, this is really, really cool. So now when I save this, I have Creative Cloud show it when it does not match this one for 15 seconds. Uh, so that's really, really cool. You can find other uses for it. Any app that shows up in your menu bar can work like this. So you can get creative with what works for you. Then the final thing that's pretty cool is they have a quick search option. So you can set up a key shortcut. I have this set up. And then I can just go through any of the things that are in my menu bar, and I can even type them. So I could do a paste bot, right? And hit enter, and that'll be effectively clicking the paste bot icon in the menu bar. And so that brings up whatever it does. I can get out of it, and it will disappear in a second. So that's really nice. Um, but yeah, you can use this keyboard shortcut to pull up any of them. Uh, I could pull up Bartender 4, and that is that. But yeah, it can simulate clicks. You can find things in there quickly. It's kind of like a quick launcher sort of thing. It's pretty cool, and I really like that as well. Uh, to go into that, you can go into your bartender preferences, go to hotkeys, and you can see I have that set up here. So I can hit this keyboard combo at any point to bring up everything in my menu bar. That's really, really nice. I'm a big fan of this feature. And all of this, I think, comes together to create an app that's more useful for me. This app also, or this update, I should say, also brings support for Big Sur. It brings support for Apple Silicon Macs. So there's some other smaller features here. You can check those out. I'll leave a link to the update page in the description. But yeah, that is it for this episode of The Changelog. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, so I've been using this for a while on my Mac, and I, I really like it. It just does a nice job of organizing my menu bar and adding some functionality and features to it. So um, if it's something that interests you, I, I, I highly recommend it. Well, and do you know what the price of this is? It is, uh, you know, I had this the other day because I looked it up currently and now I don't have it at my fingertips. So, um, oh, that's fine. I can look it up. I, or, or I'll uh, grab it when I'm done here, just since I'm right in the middle here. <laughs> I, I, I just purposely last week went back and looked it up and I forgot I was going to put it in here. And then I, I forgot to do that. And now I don't remember off the top of my head what it is right now. All right, so moving along, I wanted to talk about some of you guys, any of you heard of juice jacking or trust jacking? Never. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, well, you know, plugging your iPhone or iPad into a public port um, can bring all kinds of nasty viruses, infections, things to your phone. And so two of these things are referred to as juice jacking and trust jacking. And so I thought I would... Um, just mention these because it definitely is a security thing. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people, you know, when they're on the go, um, you know, it's it's kind of funny because it's like I watch my my students at school all the time. They're always constantly trying to plug in places to charge phones, you know, or I think about like when you're traveling and maybe you're in an airport or something like that, you know, you, oh, I want to get a charge before I get back on the plane or something, um, you know, Sometimes when you plug into a charging port, you know, it's not always just a charging port. Um, and so you, people, I don't often think, maybe think about security when they're doing this, 
but you know it's something that you know the cable the lightning cable you might be using to charge your phone with may be doing more than just charging because it can also carry data and that'll that can make you vulnerable to hacking so how exactly do you you know protect yourself from this and you know practice safe connecting well starting with juice jacking so as I said, both iPhones and iPads use the same port for charging as they do for data transfer. And so what it does, juice jacking just exploits your device to connect through the charging port to hijack it. And they're just simply waiting for somebody to connect there. And then the, the hacker can now steal data from your device. Um, now, let me say this, your devices aren't as vulnerable as they used to be but there is still a danger whenever you're connecting to a strange port, um, you know, then you don't know, you know, who might be on the other end of that port. Now, since iOS 7, which has been a while now, there's, you know, an authentic authentication when you plug into a port. Um, and so you guys have probably seen like some kind of message come up like this. And so you have to allow stuff. So if you don't allow, supposedly, juice jacking can occur. Um, but I would tell you, be aware that if you see this prompt when you're just trying to connect your device to, to a port you're supposed to be charging, it means that there's more going on there than just charging. Um, and this could be some kind of malicious attempt to, you know, try to either grab your data or install some kind of malware. So, you know, while your clicking don't allow should help you with that, um, there is a danger of a related vulnerability that's called trust jacking. So um, this trust jacking came around, it was actually discovered by um, researchers at Symantec back in 2017. And so they, they discovered there's a vulnerability when you plug an iPhone, you know, USB port onto someone else's computer using a USB port. And iOS will ask the whether the computer can be trusted or not. It also prompts the computer, it prompts that the computer will gain access to the data when you grant permission. And after granting permission, it's allowing, you know, the two devices to talk back and forth. So this started, you know, through, you know, like iTunes syncing. And so once you do it, now the trusted computer, you're, you're you know, the phone, it's vulnerable to that trusted computer because you said, oh yeah, I trust this computer connect. Well, if that's not your computer, now your you know, phone or whatever can be trust jacked. And so the computer now can get access to messages, photos, whatever other data. And it can also add to that computer any kind of malicious apps or even perform you know, administrative tasks without even asking for th further authorization from your phone. Um, so um, even though the initial time you do this, it's got to be done through a cable, through the device, um, what's interesting about this is that the phone can be accessed even after you disconnect from that device, the physical cable later on. Um, and so now you've got a vulnerability there that, that remains later on. So how do you stop that? Well, Unfortunately, there's no one way to deauthorize like just one laptop that you think might be suspect after you gave it access. So then you would have to go and revoke access to all authorized laptops or computers that you plugged into. And so to do this, you'd have to go in your phone to settings to general. Then you got to scroll down to the reset option and you have to select reset location and privacy. And it'll ask you to enter your passcode to deauthorize all these devices. So once you do that, then the problem is you got to then go reauthorize all the computers that you actually want to connect to the device. So then you have to go through all that. Um, so that's what juice jacking and trust jacking are. And just remember, just because you're plugging into a port, you know, just to charge, it doesn't mean that it's just a charging port. So, you know, I would always recommend, you know, unless you know exactly what you're plugging into, hit, hit don't allow, um, you know, and, and if you're using having to connect to a computer that is not yours, then you might wanna, you know, revoke that access once you're done to avoid either of these things. Right, right. Do we have time? 
What's that? We have time for a, I just wanted to add a comment, Glenn, to kind of supplement what you were saying. Sure, go ahead. I had read something recently that recommended that um, if you do find yourself in need of charging somewhere away from home, take with you an Apple charger and an Apple, no, not necessarily an Apple brand, but a, a, a lightning cable and a charger that plugs into it. And then you plug the charger into the electricity. You just plug it into a plug somewhere. And that way you're using your own cable and your own charger, not some other possibly yeah. hijacked or compromised yeah, cable. Right. Yeah. The other thing you can do is if you, um, you know, have a you know, external charging device of any kind, you know, that would be also a way for you to avoid that kind of stuff. Or the RF charging, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I always carry with me some kind of little, you know, I've got a couple little charging bricks that I just plug into when I'm on the road when I need them. So I, I recommend those as well. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you what, since we are like kind of pushing nine, I, I don't want to go over. What I can do is I can just sort of take the rest of these and I can just, um, hey, you know, Adam, do the rest of this next month. If that's, you know, all right with you guys. That'll work. Yeah, that's fine. That way, I'm not not keeping everybody. That's good. All right. And so okay. I'll I'll make this a a May slash June mm -hmm. <laughs> presentation. Sounds good to me. You're gonna split the PDF. Yeah, I can do that, Alan. Or Ron, I mean, I don't know why I said Al. I'm looking at Alan's picture. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, my beer doesn't hasn't come in yet. So. <laughs> well, thanks, Glenn. That was sure. very interesting as usual. Um, so will you be retired next month? I, I will be, Alan. I will be in a much better mood next time you guys see me, hopefully. <laughs> you can't get much louder. <laughs> We'll okay, outside. everybody, thanks for coming this evening, and I hope you've all found something useful and interesting. A lot of things. Thank yeah. you, Steve. Thanks, everybody, for sharing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All, all right. right. Good night, good night, guys. Bye, everybody. I'm going to click the Bye. end. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Bye, everybody.